Hello everybody! Welcome back to Glitz and Glitter! I've got this beautiful mold back out. This has been ordered from Barbara. Barbara has placed like, she wants three things made. So, and each one's going to get a video because each one is a full video. So this is that beautiful Into Resin mold that has the roses all over it and it has roses on the side. If you could see inside these sides, there are lots of roses all over this. This came out gorgeous the first time I did it. And the first time I did it, I did use the same color. The only thing I'm changing on the base coat is of course her favorite sparkle. Well, this is the Rolio Pearl White. This is not my crushed crystal because I didn't want to overtake it, but I wanted the sparkle. So that's what this is going to do to the beige color. And then she wants the big flowers in yellow and the small flowers in pink. And she wants the, the, the leaves, of course, in green. So those colors have special meanings to her and they represent her loved ones. So I'm going to get started. This one, I had to go back and watch the old video. This one takes nine to ten ounces to fill it up so I'm just going to do ten ounces and I don't want to underdo it I would rather overdo it and I know you guys don't mind the extras so let's get some resin mixed up got myself 10 ounces mixed up and before I put it in the vacuum chamber to get all those micro bubbles out we're going to mix my color and I'm going to pour just a little bit in this cup so I can get it mixed really well I'm trying to remember this step because without doing this step it's very easy to not mix your your mica powders very well so I'm just going to put a bunch this comes out so pretty so satiny I just, this is one of my favorite colors now that I have. I'm going to put some of this in and some of the pearl white in, which is really just sparkle. It doesn't really turn your um, project white. I've tried that before, but it does give it a really pretty sparkle. So that's what I'm going to do with this. Let me grab myself a stir stick. and get all of this powder into a paste. And then I will add a little bit more, get it all like dissolved. And then I'll pour it into there, get it mixed and put it in the vacuum chamber for about five minutes. If you don't do this step, you have a very good chance of your mica powder falling to the bottom and it won't cure really it'll be a little tiny soft spot and you will definitely be able to tell it was unmixed mica powder so after doing you know a couple projects and making that mistake i think i've now keep remembering to do this first because i definitely don't want to mess up somebody's project i don't want to have to redo it i don't want to waste resin so just take your extra steps, especially if you guys are selling at markets or, or your custom orders or whatever you guys are doing. It's always worth the extra steps. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to take it and dump it into here. And if I need to add a little more sparkle, I will because that stuff will probably not dissolve because those are like little sparkle flakes. Every drop, I'm gonna get them all out. So we'll just check the color and if you need to add more powder now, now's the time to do it. But I can't see my stick, so that's a good thing. This is so creamy and so velvety. Wait until you see it. If you didn't see the last video, wait until you see this one unmolded it is going to be so pretty when we're done pink and yellow she picked goes together nicely it's gonna go nice on this little creamy color I think you're gonna love it Barbara 
Okay, I see the sparkle coming out a little bit more now. I'm gonna add some more. Like I said, this is not as potent as the uh, crushed crystal, so you can go ahead and scoop it in. Maybe I'll try a little crushed crystal in here too, because I know she likes that in her projects. It's usually a definite additive. So I'm gonna go ahead, so I don't keep scooping this out and using most of it. To get that sparkle, I'm going to go ahead and use this, which is super duper similar, it's just more potent. That's probably enough. That definitely brought it up a notch. Oh, that's pretty. That is so pretty. I should have done that to my first video. Why didn't I think of that? All right, let me get this in the vacuum chamber and we're gonna start pouring. So if you use your mold a lot, especially these handmade ones, don't spray them with alcohol. It will reduce the life of your mold. I don't get to use my molds very often. I am going to spray this with alcohol, so don't yell at me in the comments for doing it. <laughs> I know, I know the rules, but I want this perfect for her. I don't want any bubbles, and since I don't get to use these molds often, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm just going to spritz it with alcohol, especially in these roses, and avoid any bubbles, because it's more important to me that her box comes out perfect than fighting with bubbles and all those little tiny roses. The lid holds more than the jar does, which is usually the case. And I hope I mixed, last time in the other video, I mixed eight ounces and had to remix. So that's why I did th this way. This one just poured six ounces in the lid. All right, so I am going to spray down the sides because I think in the last video, I heard myself say that there were some bubbles in the roses. So I'm not going to let that happen again. I'm gonna pour it slow, use my stick and just kind of, well, I won't use the stick, that's too abrasive. I think I will use this. And just squish it down. Hopefully I get no bubbles. And it looks like 10 ounces is what you're going to need to fill up this mold. So there are no extras on this one, guys. I am sorry to disappoint. It's gonna take every last drop of the 10 ounces. I do clean these cups out, um, these big large ones. I, I clean them out because these are nice and sturdy and I don't want to have to buy them and I have about half a dozen of them to my name. <laughs> so I do clean them out with alcohol as soon as I turn the camera off. Okay, that's it. Time to um, let it cure. And then the fun part is after we demold. They're cured, like just cured, like this one might bend because I can't wait any longer. So let's pull this one out first to see what it's looking like and get this all dolled up. Came out of the mold beautiful. Oh, wow. See, I should have put the sparkle in mine. This one is so much prettier. I don't see any bubbles, not even in all these little ball like pearly things oh that's beautiful 
that is gorgeous so much prettier this way so if you make the mold add yourself some shimmer some glitz and some glitter I probably shouldn't take this one out because it's still bendy but I can't help it trying to be careful because I don't want it to like come out of shape which it very well can I should have just waited but I can't wait all right oh my gosh look at the sparkle in this so pretty see that yeah, it's a little bendy and the fits just right well maybe I better I'm going to keep it together and maybe put some saran wrap in between so it doesn't get stuck until it's completely cured. But before I do that, because I still have time, I'm just going to start painting on everything. And I have these Ink Lab metallic markers to do that. These are dual sided. And all I'm going to do. is very carefully take my time and this covers um, this color pretty good the ink lab markers at first she kind of wanted the, the bowl to be green and I was like oh I don't think the markers like yellow markers are going to go over a green base so that's why we changed the design and use the um, the uh, beige color instead. So I think I was right because I still think this is gonna need maybe two coats, we'll see. So I'm gonna go very carefully and very slowly. I'm gonna get the sides and the tops of all the leaves and then I'll move on to the flowers now if you mess up just grab a little whoops a little micro brush and some alcohol and just take it off of where you don't want it and it just disappears just like that so are you ready for a little fast forward here we go
I'm going along, going along. Everything's great. Everything's beautiful. The green's gorgeous. The pink's gorgeous. I put the yellow on and I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? It's, the yellow marker is not the same brand. It's not a metallic marker. And what kind of marker? Oh, this is an acrylic marker. It didn't look nice. You can clearly see the difference between the yellow, the pink, and the green. It looks horrendous. So the whole hour I was painting this, I'm thinking, how am I going to fix this? I don't want to ask her to change her color because I don't have a yellow metallic marker. It didn't come in the set. This is the closest and it went on green. So I took out my acrylic paint. It did the same thing. It was just easier to cover. So I was like, what can I do to fix it? So what I did... I cut one of my little brushes down. This was like this long. So I cut all the bristles off. I grabbed some UV resin. I grabbed some crushed crystal that she loves. Same stuff I put in the mica powder. And I tried covering the yellow flowers and they came out really pretty. Now they are more shiny than the pink, but it is way better than the other way around. So that was my fix on this because I did not know what to do. I didn't want to say, hey, how about gold instead? Because gold is clearly not yellow. So that's all I'm doing here. I have not done this one yet. I'm using high viscosity UV resin because it's nice and thick and it's not going to run down into the pink flowers because I don't want the pink flowers to get done. So this the yellow flowers are going to be very special. In fact, if I remember the story correctly, the yellow flowers represent, I think it was her aunt who raised her. And um, her mother didn't raise her and her aunt was the closest thing. And um, this was her aunt's favorite color. And the pink is Barbara's favorite color. So that's why we are doing the pink and the yellow. So I was never going to ask her to say, hey, you know what? Yellow ain't working for me. Let's pick a different color. <laughs> that wasn't going to happen. So you do what you have to do and you come up with a plan B. And this plan looks pretty good. It's got her favorite sparkle in there. And I'm just taking this uh, flashlight to cure it real quick. So I can move on to the next one. And then when I'm finished with them all, I'm going to throw it under the, the big UV light over there. I took some silver and I went around those little pearly things just to, you know, give it a little blingy bling on the edge. So see the difference between that one and these two? Huge difference. And it'll be sealed in forever. So that's a good thing as well. So guys, there's always a fix. It just took me an hour to think of it and I was freaking out the whole hour. It's a good thing you were on like fast forward with music because you had no idea I was freaking out, did you? <laughs> I highly doubt it. So anyway, there's another fix for you. I'm just going to finish this off and cure it and we will come back with the final result so I could show it to you all together. She's all done. It's all cured. I put it under multiple cycles just to make sure it was completely done. Here is my only extra from the UV resin. So I added a bunch of crushed crystal and made a tiny little pendant. I will stick in the box for her. She can have this one. So what do you think of the save? And the only other thing I changed, the silver I did with my chrome marker, I didn't like the gray look from the metallic one. So I did put my um, chrome marker pen because it's more of a silver than it is gray. So that's it. Oh, and I put a piece of cork that I use for coasters on the bottom so she could put it on her table or her dresser or wherever she wants without scratching anything. But it is a beauty. She picked some beautiful colors. I will get you guys some pictures for the end so you can adore it outside of this messy area. All right, guys, guess what? I will see you tomorrow, 9 o'clock. I will see you then. Guys, have a blessed night. Bye.